That you're just passing through. And so you know that sometimes you have rough times. Sometimes you lose loved ones. But when it comes down to knowing that uh, God doesn't make any mistakes and that uh, he has already placed, uh, prepared a place for you and I on the other side, you know that you will see your loved ones who's going to glory. Amen. And you know that, um, that God is... Is, is worthy to be given praise no matter what may happen, no matter what trouble we may experience. And we can, we can just uh, depend on God's word when he speaks into the heart of James. And James says, count, all, count it all joy. Yes, sir. Amen. When you go through trials and temptation in this life, because God, he's a God that has your back. Amen. 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 Again, I thank God for your, ple your presence here. Um, I would like you to turn with me, if you have your Bible, to uh, James, third chapter. Uh, James, the third chapter. Um, matter of fact, that's... Uh, in the New Testament, way in the back. Amen. Yes, when you see uh, Mark, you keep on passing. You see Matthew, you keep on passing. You see Romans, keep on passing. But you find yourself in Revelation, you need to back up a couple. Of You'll find James a couple of more chapters on up from Revelation. And the reason why I know is because that's what I had to do. All right. <laughs> and little Brother Jackson outlines the scriptures in the book of James. It's just a small little book there. Amen. Amen. James, the third chapter, verse 1 through 12. There you will find these words. Not many of you should become teachers, my fellow brother, my fellow believers, because you know that we who teach will be judged more strictly. We all stumble in many ways, he says. Anyone who never at fault in what they say in perfect is perfect, able to keep their whole body in check. When we put bits into the mouths of uh, the, the into the mouths of the horses uh, to make them obey us, we can turn the whole animal. Amen. Mm -hmm. Or take ships. As an example, although they are so large and are driven by strong winds, they are stirred by a very small rudder wherever the pilot wants to go. Likewise, the tongue is a small part of the body, but it makes great boast. Consider what? A great forest is set on fire by a small spark. The tongue also is a fire. A world of evil among the parts of the body. The tongue also is a fire. Amen. A world of evil among parts of the body. It corrupts the whole body set the whole course of one's life on fire. And it self sets on fire by hell. All kinds of animals, birds, 
reptiles and sea creatures are being tamed and have been tamed by mankind. But no human uh, being can tame the tongue. It is a restless, evil, full of deadly poison. With the tongue, uh, we praise our Lord and Father. And with it, we curse human beings who have been made in God's likeness. It says, out of the same mouth come praise and cursing. My brother and sister, this should not be, he says. Can both fresh water and salt water flow from the same spring? My brothers and sisters, can it fit can a fig tree bear olives, or a grapevine bear fig? Neither can the salt spring produce fresh water. Amen. All right. Twelve verses for your hearing. Coming from this passage of scripture, I want to. leave you with this this thought governing uh, the tongue amen governing the tongue here we have James a messenger amen a bond servant who identify himself as a slave of God then of the Lord Jesus Christ a representative who was totally influenced, motivated, and even captured by the teachings of Jesus, who he honored as master. He have no, we have no uh, history on James' age or his wife, but uh, we do know that he was the son of Zebedee. Mm -hmm. And we do know that his mother's name was Salome. We know his brother, John, uh, was also an apostle. And out of all of the apostles, James uh, is mentioned in all four Gospels. Uh, a brilliant writer, amen, a clever, a man of God who uh, was very skilled in his words of encouragement. And I want you to know that I have two two brothers, and one of my brothers is, is older, and the other one is younger than me. All right. And if I needed a, a word of encouragement uh, for some kind of uh, situation that I may have uh, brought upon myself because of some belief I may have, mm -hmm. uh, well, uh, uh, to hear from my brothers, both of them, that, uh, from letters uh, that were maybe sent to me in different ways, uh, well, the encouragement there uh, would elevate my confidence over whatever that situation is. All right. uh, because uh, it's coming from uh, brothers that love me. The letter is coming from my brothers that love me, those who care about me. And so I said this to say this, uh, the letter, amen, uh, that is coming from James uh, was also a letter that was uh, sent from their love, uh, the love of Christ. Uh, but we realize that it is a different kind of love from the love of Christ that one has and, and the love that we may just have from uh, for what each other, one each other. You may love me and I may love you, uh, but if you make me mad, or if I make you mad, okay. amen, then we have that thing called, we know how to turn on our love and we know how to turn off our love. All right. 
But uh, uh, the love of Christ is not like that kind of turning on and turning off kind of love. That's right. Amen. And so James, he sent uh, uh, the letter to uh, the same areas uh, where uh, Peter's letter was sent. Mm -hmm. Amen. Uh, to those who were scattered all over the different regions uh, on the, the southern coast of the Black Sea. Uh, now, the reason why uh, they were scattered, these people that were scattered, uh, they were scattered because of the persecution. Uh, they were being persecuted. Mm -hmm. Amen. And uh, the reason why they were, they were persecuted uh, is because of the breaking of uh, the covenant made with Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, uh, which later was reinstated, amen, before the death of Christ. Uh, this is why uh, the word in the Lord's Supper validates the reinstatement of the covenant when Jesus says that uh, this cup is the new covenant in my blood. Do this now, as often as you drink it, drink it in remembrance of me. Amen. Amen. And so therefore, uh, you and I are entitled to all of the blessings that, uh, that comes to God's children. Right. Amen. And even though the, uh, the history tells us uh, from these people that were scattered all uh, in the areas of those different regions there. Uh, even though history tells us that uh, they were mistreated uh, from the, the Jews because they were Gentiles and were not like them. Even though that uh, uh, history lets, uh, lets us know that uh, that even the blacks have been mistreated uh, by the whites. I mean, history does not, uh, not lie, it's history. Mm -hmm. Amen. Yeah. Uh, but whether we were mistreated or not, since the reinstated of the new covenant, mm -hmm. amen, yeah. everybody now are entitled, amen, of the blessings and the benefits that comes to God, to, to God's children. Mm -hmm. Some people have said that uh, uh, Jesus uh, was a Jew, but yet Jesus was black. Mm. And uh, it puzzles my mind there when I hear things like that because it makes me wonder uh, whether it's true or not, uh, what difference or what kind of benefit is that going to help you to get to heaven? All right. Amen. Okay. Jesus had decided that he had to come down and enter into the flesh. Yeah. Whether he was going into uh, the bodies of Indians, or whether he was going into whites, or whether he's going into blacks, uh, he had decided that he had to enter into the flesh. Mm -hmm. Amen. And so, uh, let us not thinking that because uh, the color of he was that is going to help you to get to heaven. No, it's not going to help you at all. Uh, you're going to have to know him for yourself. You're going to have to get to know him, get your relationship with him. And not only by faith, you're going to have deeds. You're going to actually have to act on your faith. And that's what James is basically saying because uh, in this letter, the letter is coming to the church. Amen. It's coming to uh, leaders like you and leaders like me. Amen. Teachers as well. Amen. As we look at the picture there, we realize that uh, King Ahab was one of God's uh, representatives. Amen. And he was one over uh, a generation there that uh, yet he were being judged uh, by uh, so many people. Uh -huh. Amen. Mm -hmm. 
yet he was influenced by a tongue that was evil Amen. into the heart of his wife. Yeah. Amen. But God is a God that uh, he will warn you. Amen. Amen. Before it's too late. Mm -hmm. yeah. And so what did he do? He sent his uh, servant of God, mm -hmm. Elijah, amen, to warn him, to let him know that uh, the way that you are leading his people yeah. Is not pleasant into the sight of God. That's right. And so therefore, the, the spirit that was in him uh, was being turned into evil. Mm -hmm. We understand that he was one of was the one of the evilest kings that were there because the motivation and the influence that he were getting from his wife, who had an evil tongue. All right. Amen. But however, uh, as we look at the next one there, uh, it shares with us uh, how the word is talking about the leader into the text. He says, not many of you should become teachers. My fellows, brothers, believers, uh, because you know that we uh, who teaches, amen, will be judged and judged strictly. Sometimes we, we stumble, it says, the third verse. We all stumble in many ways. Like we see that, I don't need to comment on the, the brothers that are on the picture, uh, but uh, if you have read the news and you have uh, listened to the media, amen. Uh, they were ones that did stumble uh, as leaders. Amen. And uh, the people, as James is talking about, will give you that strict judgment. Of course God is going to judge us uh, down the line, uh, especially the leaders and the preachers. Uh, but James is talking to uh, those cities all uh, under those regions there. Uh, he's telling them about how the people will uh, judge you. How the people will judge you. And we look on that uh, uh, photo there, we realize that there's two preachers there. Amen. And some say that uh, what possesses you to put your picture next to Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. My reason for that is that both of them were preachers, or both of these I am. Amen. Amen. And uh, we know that he's gone to glory, but uh, if I have not experienced what it's like to uh, to be judged by the people. And as a matter of fact, I have not really been chastised like what James is talking about, but what the Word is talking about, it never will return to God void. That's right. And so if I continue to stay in this uh, narrow road heading towards that place that my Lord Jesus has prepared a way for me, Amen. I will experience some tests, some trials, and going to be strictly judged by people like you in the church because uh, the word will never return to the Lord's void. Uh, and so therefore, what I'm saying to you is that the teacher and the preachers have to be real. Amen. Have to be uh, rooted into the word of God. Uh, if you're not, uh, then God will, uh, he will remind him. As the scripture uh, share with us uh, about the bits that we can put in into the mouths of, of the horses. He gives basically an illustration of how 
we who have been blessed by God to be here into this earth, or be able to be in control of an animal, uh, being able to uh, be in control of how to uh, to stir a a ship, Amen. But it's something about uh, the tongue, the tongue in which that we cannot we cannot be in control of. The Bible speaks about and how uh, the ship, the little rudder on the bottom of the ship there, and how the, the, uh, the captain would be able to, to stir that ship. He's in total in control of that big, huge ship there. But the tongue, as he talked about the tongue, amen, it's like fire. Likewise, the tongue, he says, is a small part of the body, but it makes great boast. Consider uh, what a great forest, amen, uh, could set on fire. Amen, a small spark, amen, can cause a little spark until it turn into a big spark. Amen. <laughs> that tongue is, is an evil thing. James says that the tongue also is a fire. A world of evil among the parts of the body. The tongue also is a fire of a world of evil among the parts of the body. It corrupts Amen. The whole body. It sets the whole uh, body into a course of one's life. And it is itself sets in fire into, into, into hell. Amen. And this, this, this message here is basically is telling us through different illustrations. Amen. About the tongue. Uh -huh. And how that uh, if we do not control it, amen, then there will someone who can lock it down. Amen. And sometimes we realize that we are, are in control of every move that we make, but we cannot tame the tongue. Uh -huh. And sometimes when we realize that the tongue is acting like a fool, we need to lock it down. Because if we don't lock it down, uh, they got some judges out there that will, amen, lock it down. Amen. We praise him with this tongue. We worship. We glorify him. And at the same time, we curse our brothers. We curse our sisters. Amen. With this tongue. Amen. And basically what I'm saying to you is that over and over again is that since the word says from James that we cannot tame the tongue, but yet uh, we can control the body. Uh, through God's grace. Mm -hmm. In other words, we have so much negative things that comes into one ear. Mm -hmm. We have so much positive things that is coming through the other ear. Mm -hmm. And by the time that all of that works together and comes to the tongue, amen, the only way that that tongue can be uh, controlled that if the grace of God in you it would have to be the grace of God that would cover that and to coat that tongue in a way wherein you're going to speak as if the Lord would prefer you to speak you would speak in a way wherein uh, you are speaking things that righteous people would speak to Sometimes we do get angry about certain things. 
Amen. But before we speak, we need to remember who we are. That's right. We need to remember that God is in control. Right. And if we have decided to uh, give our lives to him, mm -hmm. amen, and then uh, let the spirit of the Lord uh, coat that tongue. Yes, sir. And sometimes we say the wrong things. Yes, but it's something about the spirit of the Lord and how that spirit will stir up your heart and your conscience Amen. and let you know that you have given your life to the Lord. Yes. And so therefore you need to go back to where you messed up Amen. and apologize. Amen. And when you do that, you get a blessing from the Lord. Right. And I'm so glad that if you really get to know the Lord, yeah. There's nothing that you can do to stop your conscience that will speak to your mind on the self wearing You know that what you said to Sister So-and-so was wrong. Amen. You know that what you said to Sister so -and -so, to Brother So-and-so was wrong. Mm -hmm. And so if you proclaim yourself to be a child of God, the Spirit of the Holy God, the Spirit of the Holy Spirit, mm -hmm. Amen, that grace of God will make you, amen, speaking in the way wherein God is pleased. And that's the main thing, amen, amen that we uh, acknowledge daily uh -huh. about our tongue. Yes, sir. Again, the letter is talking about members in the church. It's talking about you and me. It's talking about the leaders who proclaim themselves to be a teacher. And it says that those uh, who would like to be teachers and preachers, it says that uh, there are not many of you, amen, should become because of the lifestyle. Mm -hmm. The lifestyle. Because God is a God that wants to what? He wants to dwell, allow his spirit to dwell within your vessel. And if you are living the life that is not wearing like King Ahab, mm -hmm. amen, the heart was filled with things that is unpleasant to the sight of God. Mm -hmm. And we need to look at, take an inventory of ourselves daily yeah. and see what is in the heart that is unpleasant to the sight of God. Maybe the preacher won't see it. Maybe, maybe your co-worker won't see it. But God would see it. And if you proclaim yourself to be a child of God, you need to take an inventory of yourself. Amen. When we come to the house of prayer and actually just ask God to forgive you. I've did it so many times. Amen. Until God has really has taken a grip on my life. And so I know I got to be real because as I stand in front of the Lord on that day, Amen. I don't want him to say, uh, depart away from me. I know that's right. Well, I did not know you. Okay. Amen. Right. And so, since teachers and preachers are going to be strictly judged, amen, then it says many of you shouldn't become teachers. Amen. amen. What do we look at on TV sometimes? Amen. What about the... I heard uh, one of the Sunday school teachers touch base on pornographic uh, kind of visual kind of movies. Mm -hmm. Feeding the mind with kind of things like that. Uh, even gambling. If the Lord Jesus would come in here uh, and uh, search the heart of those who are gambling. Mm -hmm. Amen. What kind of spirit do you think that he would have in the presence of you? Uh, and you call yourself a teacher or a preacher. This is why it says many of you should not become teachers because a lot of things like that you have to let it go. Mm -hmm. All of us have stumbled. All of us have had a little taste of what it's like to experience those kind of things. Mm -hmm. 
But if you proclaim yourself to be a teacher, teaching the kids, if you proclaim yourself to be a leader, singing, uh, uh, worshiping songs, mm -hmm. if you proclaim yourself to be a teacher, preaching God's word, then these things like pornographic, gambling, living the life as the worldly people, you have to delete this kind of uh, behavior. Amen. Amen. This is what James is talking about over and over again. And it's like a warning. Amen. Like Elijah did to King Ahab. Mm -hmm. And it's still happening over and over again. Amen. Speaking to the church. Speaking to the teachers. Amen. Speaking to the leaders who are proclaiming themselves to be teachers of God's will. And so, therefore, if you're a teacher, if you're a preacher, or if you are one who desire to be one, you have to be real. You have to get down on your knees and you have to beg the Lord to remove some kinds of lifestyle that is unpleasant to you. You know what I do every day. You know the kind of people that I hang around to. You know the, 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 the evil things and the, and the things that I have said. Remove these things away from my heart. And James said that if you ask him, that he will honor your requests. But you have to believe that he does honor your requests. Amen. Amen. God is not playing with you, and he's not playing with me. Amen. Amen. I may not preach as well as some others. I may not read as well as some others. But one thing that I know without a doubt, that I'm real with my God. I'm real with my God. And my message is to you is that if you desire, because I have desired many times, I've asked God to burn, place within my heart and my mind, a burner, a burning spirit that would actually, hallelujah to his name. I want him to put a burner within my heart to be willing to teach his word, to be able to preach his word, to be able to uh, let his word become a part of me. I said, put a burner within my heart, Lord. Amen. So that you may be glorified and that his people be edified. And so there's a lot of things I had to drop. A lot of things I had to let go. A lot of friends I had to realize that when I'm going to be around them, that's all I've got to be around them for the time for me to minister to them yeah. than to hang around with them like I used to. Amen. amen. And so, if you are here today, amen, and you uh, want to get right with the Lord, or you have been been right with the Lord, and somehow or another you uh, need a church, amen, to uh, become active and to become uh, a vessel that the Lord can dwell his spirit within you. Uh, maybe there's a gift that you have. Amen. That you can share that. Amen. Maybe there is a, a, some kind of a ability that you have. Amen. That you need to put back in active. We're going to give you an opportunity today. Amen. To by extending uh, the invitation to discipleship for those who uh, would like to give their life to the Lord or to uh, reinstate their lives uh, to the Lord. Amen. And so we're going to ask them brothers to come and sing this uh, couple of songs here as I uh, hasten on a little bit here. The scripture reads, amen, from the book of Acts, second chapter 38. It says, 
Peter re replies, he says, repent and be baptized, every one of you, in the name of Jesus Christ, for the forgiveness of your sins, and you will receive the gift of the Holy Spirit. And what does that mean? That means that uh, you will be what? Entitled to receive the gift of the Holy Spirit. Jesus said in the book of John 15, 3 and 4, said that you have been pruned, amen, and purified by the word of God. And so therefore he wants you to what? He wants you to abide in me, he says. For you to live in me. Allowing his word to live within you. That's when he says that abide in me. To live in me. Amen. To remain yourself within me. Changing the lifestyle from the worldly lifestyle into the lifestyle that he uh, was rooting into the hearts of his disciples when he was with them. Right. Amen. And just remember that story that I shared with you about how uh, so much negative come out of one ear, goes into one ear, and so much negative goes in the other, and by the time it comes out of your mouth, amen, if you want to actually know how to, to, to cope that with the grace of God, this is a daily, a daily lifestyle that it has to be uh, changed and given to the Lord, totally surrendered to the Lord Jesus. Amen. And he will, when so much negative is coming in, and so much positive coming in, he will allow the Holy Spirit to cope that with the grace of God. Uh -huh. And you will speak slower. You will humble yourself. For the scripture says in Galatians 3, 26 and 27, he says, so in Christ, in Christ Jesus, you are all children of God through faith for all of you who were baptized into Christ have clothed yourselves uh, with Christ. In other words, that means putting on uh, the full armor of God. Amen. amen. Learning how, uh, amen, to, to, to deal with things in life uh, by being active into the church and being active in, in uh, Bible class and Sunday school and uh, a lifestyle being changed to the point that it becomes a part of you. Amen. It becomes a part of you in a way wherein God can dwell uh, his directions, how he wants you to deal with his, your life. Romans says that for we die, Amen. It's like giving that lifestyle away. For we died uh, and were buried uh, with Christ by baptism. Yes, sir. And just as Christ was raised from the dead yes, sir. Uh, by the glorious power of uh, the Father, mm -hmm. uh, now we also uh, may live a new life. Yes. That's a beautiful thing to know that you have a new life. And sometimes, like I said earlier, that uh, having this new life doesn't mean that you will not have hurdles to go across. Well, doesn't mean that you will have you will not have a, a, a rough time down the line. Right. But you can depend on God's word. When James says, "Count it all joy," yeah. when all of the trials and the temptation, count it all joy. Amen. Amen. Because God is a God that has your back. Amen. And if you want to actually uh, give your life to the Christ uh, today, we're going to extend this invitation for you by singing a few verses of this old song. I've got a feeling everything's going to be all right. <laughs>